requested uh, tens of thousands of reinforcements to come in in, in Afghanistan, to have a, a surge in Afghanistan. The president gave him kind of a mealy-mouthed response and sent over 30,000 troops. Well, that wasn't what he asked for. That wasn't what he needed. That was one of the criticisms McChrystal had. It, he found it deeply frustrating that he was not given the resources he needed. <clears throat> and and uh, the reports are coming out of Afghanistan now that we're losing because, unfortunately, the president is not listening to the wise counsel of uh, these very experienced warriors. Let's not forget here, this is a general in Stanley McChrystal who is, is in a position where he's trying to win a war and he finds himself uh, reporting to and, and answering to a community organizer from Chicago uh, and one who has no idea how to run a war, yet ignores the requests that are, are, are being uh, levied and instead... Uh, looks down his, the bridge of his nose at these troops and says, here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to do it. And, well, the results, uh, I think, are a foregone conclusion, and they're not positive results. I think that's a great deal of where the criticism is coming from. However, as, as you point out, Sean, it's still, this is a, a conversation that is better had uh, behind closed doors, not publicly. So you have to speculate what drove Stanley McChrystal to... to uh, lash out in such a public way, I, I suspect that he had to have known that this was going to cost him his job. Maybe this, maybe he figured it would be better to sacrifice his own career in order to try to shed some light on the inadequacies of this Obama administration. That could very well be the case, Matt. The problem is, and, 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 and again, he, I'm not saying that justifies it. But sure, yeah, but go ahead. Maybe he's maybe he's thought thought through it better than we we know. But here's where we start getting some concern. Both sides of Afghanistan, both the, the, the official government of Afghanistan, of Afghanistan and the Taliban, both issued statements on this. Mm -hmm. And McChrystal, being a brilliant military mind who left the military forum to go into basically a pop culture and political forum by giving this interview to, to Rolling Stones, had to know that he was going to weaken the commander-in-chief in front of the rest of the world, and that's precisely what happens. You see one side uh, shoring up, trying to shore up support of the United States and McChrystal, and the other side, the Taliban, trying to tear it down. Here's what I mean. Uh, President Hamid Karzai, who wants to have a strong America back Backing him says uh, it's the statement on his behalf. The president, that is Karzai, strongly supports General McChrystal and his strategy in Afghanistan and believes he is the best command the United States has sent to Afghanistan over the last nine years. In contrast, uh, here's what the Taliban said. Uh, it said that McChrystal's recall was another sign of the start of the political defeat for U.S. policies in Afghanistan. The BBC News re recently ran this report that paralleled those two statements. And, and you have to know that a guy with, with that kind of military insight knows that he strategically weakened uh, the president of the United States and the U.S. stance, and for that matter, the official government of Afghanistan. Well, that's statement. right. Our, our, our enemies latched on uh, to uh, General McChrystal's comments and used those comments. He, he gave them a, a real gift here. They can use those comments to further undermine uh, this president. Well, that's uh, our job, not to undermine the president's effectiveness. We want him to be an effective commander-in-chief. But our job as pundits and talking heads and, and commentators and, and uh, observers uh, within the administration or within this, this nation is to certainly offer constructive criticism to this president. That's what, what we're trying to do, but to do so in, in a way that I would hope would, would uh, uplift this, uh, this administration in its effectiveness in carrying out uh, this war and the war in Iraq. That's what we're trying to do. Unfortunately, I think General McC McChrystal took it too far. Well, tomorrow we're going to be talking about President Obama and his Father's Day proclamation uh, uh, upholding the virtues of two father households. Go to lc.org to learn more about Liberty Council. 
You have been listening to Matt Staver of Liberty Council. Our hope is to encourage and inspire you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedoms. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email update. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom. 